up on January 10th out in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, I invite all of you to attend if you want to. They're, they are fun and very, very enlightening. It's a good group and we can always have more. Uh, Thursday nights, these Thursday night socials have turned into kind of like a Thursday night soup night. So somebody just brings soup and we enjoy our hot soup on a cold day and a little bit of social time and is open for everybody. So if you want to come, if you have family here, just bring them with you. There's always plenty to go around. Thursday on the January 12th, which is next Thursday, we will have a PW meeting. And then on January 22nd, which is really important that we need everybody to attend is our annual congregational meeting on the 22nd. Um, do we have, yes, do we have a PW announcement? Yes, I do. Uh, January the 26th will be our first PW meeting, which is a Thursday at 1.30. And I will be texting everyone. Uh, January 26th. Okay, everybody. And we'll be discussing the February soup lunch. And hopefully I'll have the stuff from, the balance of the stuff from the bazaar. Takes some time. Okay, are there any other announcements? Then let us begin. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Please join me in singing hymn number 115, Away in a Manger, and we'll sing all of the verses today. forgot to say a couple of thank yous. First, thank you, Janine, for coming out in this weather and praying for us. And Gary, thank you again for being our shovel man. You are more than appreciated. You just have no idea. Join me in our call to worship. A new day has dawned and a new year begun. O Lord, call us so we may hear your voice. The world turns to hope and dreams of the future. O Lord, keep us in your ways and on your path. We enter this new year with hope and excitement. O Lord, guide us as we look to you and worship you. Amen. Now if you'll please join me in hymn number 132, Good Christian Friends Rejoice. Please stand. Good song. It's right into the 
Please join me in our corporate prayer of confession. All this new year, as we as the new year is born, when we remember and regret, forgive us, Holy One, when we keep you at a distance, when we defy your bidding, when we make it harder for people to know. Forgive us, Holy One. When we deny our weakness, when we wallow in our weakness, when we take advantage of the weakness of others, forgive us, Holy One. When we refuse your counsel, when we raise your gifts, when we withhold your compassion for others. A new year is born. We labor to look forward, our hearts filled with hope, for you are making all things new, even us. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to God. So, I'm going to forgo the passing of peace today. For, not because there's just a few of us, but for other reasons. So... Please stand and will join us in singing our Gloria Patre, number 581. <laughs> Join me in prayer. Holy God, as the dawn breaks on a new year, let us give thanks for all that we hold dear, our health, our family, and our friends. Let us release our grudges and our anger and our pains, for these are nothing but binding chains. Let us live each day in the most loving ways, the God-gracious, conscious ways. And Lord, today we lift up Pat Lozier's family, the Trent Clark family, the Sims family, and we say this together saying, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift up Stephanie Childs, Jim, Jim and Josette and Aaron and Misty Hunsaker. Tyson Hopkins, Cody Swears, Donna's friend Wendy, Sharon's family, and Angie. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we lift up Nicole and Jana and Todd, Kathy Daly, Dagmire, Chris Gentry, Junior Chug, Sheldon Main, Ken Lund, and Alicia Price. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for Tammy's sister Deborah, Kathy Robinson, Billy Joe Skinner, Steve Landyke, Ross and Linda Walker, Rossi, Dixie Ledbetter, McKay Hansen, and Damian Henderson. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Lord, we pray for the children and the, the people of the Belize Mission. We pray for victims of violence and disaster. We pray for our country and its leaders. We pray for communities dealing with gun violence, the people of Ukraine. And we pray for peace in our hearts, in our community, and the world. Lord, in your mercy. And Holy God, let us remember that we are all one, embracing all, discriminating once against none. And may your year be filled with peace, with prosperity, and love. And may God's blessings shower upon us and bestow upon us, each of us, a bright and healthy and peaceful new year. Amen. Please join me now in our hymn, our preparation hymn, number 123. It came upon a midnight clear. Please stand.
favorite Christmas carols. Our first reading today comes from Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 63, verses 7 through 9. No, I'm sorry, verses, yeah, 7 through 9. And I'm reading from the Message Bible. This is entitled, A lot of the things God has made that need praising. I'll make a list of God's gracious dealings and all the, on all the things God has done that need praising. All the generous bounties of God, His good, great goodness to the family of Israel, compassion lavished, love extravagant. He said, without a question, these are my people, children who will never betray me. So he became their savior, and in all their troubles, he was troubled too. He didn't send someone else to help them. He did it by himself in person. Out of his own love and pity, he redeemed them. He rescued them and carried them along for a long, long time. Our next reading comes from the book of Psalms. Psalms 148. Again, this is a song and a poem. It's really beautiful, actually. Hallelujah. Praise God from heaven. Praise Him from the mountaintops. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His warriors. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, you morning stars. Praise Him, high heaven. Praise Him, heavenly rain clouds. Praise, oh let them praise the name of God. He spoke the word, and they were, and there they were. He set them in place for all time and eternity. He gave his orders, and that's it. Praise God from earth, you sea dragons, you fam fathomless ocean depths, fire and hail, snow and ice, hurricanes obeying his orders. Mountains and all hills, apple orchards and cedar forests, wild beasts and herds of cattle, snakes and birds in flight, earth's kings and all races, leaders and important people, robust men and women in their prime, and yes, gray beards and little children. Let them praise the name of God. It's the only name worth praising. His radiance exceeds anything in sky and earth. He built a monument, his own, very own people. Praise from all who love God, Israel's children, intimate friends of God. Hallelujah. And our gospel reading today comes from the book of Matthew. It comes from Matthew 2, verses 13 23. After the scholars were gone, God's angel showed up again in Joseph's dream and commanded, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt. Stay until further notice. Herod is on the hunt for this child, and he wants to kill him. Joseph obeyed. He got up, took the child and his mother under cover of darkness. They were out of town and well on their way by daylight. <clears throat> they lived in Egypt until Herod's death. This Egyptian exile, exile fulfilled what Hosea the prophet had preached. I call my son out of Egypt. Herod, when he realized that the scholars had tricked him, flew into a rage. He commanded the murder of every little boy, two years old and under, who lived in Bethlehem and its surrounding hills. He determined that age from the information that he had gotten from the scholars. That's when Jeremiah's revelation was revealed. A sound was heard in Ramah, weeping much lament. Rachel's weeping for her children, Rachel refusing all solace. 
her children gone, dead and buried. Later, when Herod died, angels appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Up, take the child and his mother and return to Israel. All those out to murder the child are dead. Joseph obeyed. He got up, took the child and his mother, and returned to Israel. When he heard, though, that Archelaus had succeeded his father Herod as king in Judah, he was afraid to go there. But then Joseph was directed in a dream to go to the hills of Galilee. On arrival, he settled in the village of Nazareth. This move was, this move was the fulfillment of the prophet, prophetic words, He shall be called a Nazarene. Here ends the reading of God's word. Thanks be to God. Well, let's see. We have over the past several weeks heard the lessons of hope and love and peace and joy. Our community held a Christmas concert. We had a live nativity in the park behind the library. We held our annual Christmas Eve community, Christmas Eve service, and somewhere in there, we managed to have a church Christmas dinner party. Some of you participated in these events and some just enjoyed. This all led to the miracle that we had been waiting for, the birth of our Holy One. What a way to end a year. The words peace and love and joy and hope that fall into a season of light and should be carried with us all year long will have fled and we enter into a season of resolutions. Peace came and went with the wrappings. Hope flew out the window with the family disputes. Joy is for candy canes. Love took place, propelled us forward, and now looks for something else. These four words, and in their four weeks of glory, <coughs> glory should hold us together all of our days, but don't always seem to ground us after the final candle is blown out. So what do we do now? To some, the new that is to, seems to, for some, the new that is to come seems quite bleak. For others, there is an adventure in the horizon. Some sit and rest, and others sit in turmoil. All have forgotten quickly and are blindly reaching for the unknown. So now we start all over with a new year. The new year always brings mixed emotions for me. It's that time when we tend to look into two different directions at the same time. We look back to the past and we remember, and we look forward to a new year and we wonder. It's a time of the year, at least for me, when my emotions are just really raw. Because when I reflect on the past, I think of all of the good things that happened and I'm, I'm happy. And then I start to think about all the sad and difficult and painful things that took place. And then I get sad. And then I look about and see my kids and my grandkids and they're all getting older and I'm just getting a little nostalgic. And that is concerning. Then, when I turn around and look at this thing called 2023, I'm filled with a whole new set of emotions. I'm excited, but to be really honest with you, I'm scared. What will this year look like? Things are changing, and those things that are changing can be a bit unsettling. But the big question for today is this, how, how do we move forward when life seems so uncertain. Well, let's take a look at Joseph. 
Joseph was responsible to take care of Mary and, the, and this young child called, named Jesus, and the future was pretty scary for him. He had every reason to look at his past and think there was no way that he could move into the future. First, he was from Nazareth. Now, Nazareth was a town in Judah that nobody liked. It was definitely on the wrong side of those tracks. So he had that stigma. Second, he was the object of gossip and scorn. We often forget the part of Mary, but Mary was considered a tramp by the people of Nazareth. I mean, you can't get more despised than that, especially when the people of the town think you are a loser and nobody likes you. I mean, she got pregnant when she was engaged to Joseph and she blamed it on God. Yeah, like who's going to believe that story? What was Joseph supposed to do? He wanted to leave her, but God promised him that Mary was telling the truth. Joseph invited him to trust God against all odds. So he stood with her and he took the shame. Now here's where the rest of our story picks up today. Now the wise man had just left the house in Bethlehem. Jesus is somewhere between the ages of one and two years old at this point. And by the way, have you ever wondered why Joseph was still in Bethlehem after a year? Does it really take a year to do a census back then? I have a theory. I think that Joseph and Mary decided to stay there so that they could get away from the scandal of Nazareth and have a fresh start. Now it's just a theory. There's nothing written in stone in the Bible about that, but that's just my theory. The wise men had left them gold and expensive goods. That was pretty cool. Things were just starting to look good. Then they took a horrifying turn. King Herod files and flies into this jealous rage. The thought of a child could be alive that could someday take over his throne was unthinkable. He had to destroy the child. So Herod does the unthinkable. He orders that every child under the age of two in the Bethlehem area, area, era, area be killed. I can't even imagine that horrific day when Herod's soldiers were ripped through town, tearing the children from their mother's arms and killing them right in front of their eyes. It's a terrible thought. But that's not the only... That's not the first time that this story or this type of story had taken place. Go back to the book of Exodus. You remember what happened there? I hear somebody, yeah, she, she remembers. Way back in Exodus, an angry king of Egypt ordered that every Hebrew boy at the age of two be thrown into that Nile River and drowned. God spared a child that day, though. His name was Moses. Moses was placed in the basket, was spared, and grew up to deliver his people from the slavery of Egypt. Matthew tells us this was the fulfillment that was spoken by the Lord through the prophet of Hosea. And Hosea said, I called my son out of Egypt. But here's the real point, I think, that Matthew is trying to make here because it's a gruesome thing there's a new Moses in town his name is Jesus here's the tragic irony of the story this time it isn't the evil king or the evil king of Egypt that threatens the Hebrew people but it's the Hebrew king himself that had become a new kind of Egypt that had, had his people enslaved once again so Joseph is told by an angel to flee for his life and go to Egypt. And when the coast was clear, he wanted to go back to Jerusalem. But Archelaus was even scarier than his father. Joseph then was forced to go back to Jerusalem, 
where everyone knew his secrets and he had to carry the scorn. So how was Joseph then to move forward? He had every reason to think that he, it would never work. But there was one thing that allowed him to move forward into the future. The promise of God. Look at the promise of God. You are, a, you are blessed to be a blessing. That comes from the promise of God. And so now we look forward to the promise of God. And that will make all things new again. The faithfulness of God is in the past. And the promise of God's future shapes our present. Today it doesn't matter what happened in 2022. God's mercy is new every morning. There is always a fresh start. You know, Joseph moved into the future with disgrace hanging around him, and he was able to rise above it. Because he believed that what he was doing was what God had asked him to do. So this year, I invite you to engage in this type of journey and remember God's promise that we are blessed to be a blessing. Jesus made it clear what, Jesus is, what, what God's blessing is all about. And he made it clear how to live in it. The year should not leave us searching, but instead have us planting. We need to plant ourselves in the truth, which will keep those four words that we have heard, the peace, the love, the joy, and the hope, active and alive in our own beings. The Lord has done great things for us, and we need to remember that his life, his death, and his resurrection aren't just observations to be observed several times a year, but they are to be observed all the days. We need to celebrate Jesus every day. Live like it's his second advent and that he will finally, and that we will finally see his face. So while we head into this new season, let's remember our four words. Peace and hope, joy and love every day. And keep these promises of peace, these promises of hope, of joy and promises of love hidden in our hearts to see us through all times. We are blessed to be a blessing. Amen. Amen. Well, if the ushers will come forward, we'll have our morning offering. Let's pray. Holy and gracious God, thank you for these gracious gifts that you have given us. And as we enter this new year, help us to give freely, to love and honor you. And we say this in your name. Amen. Now, if you'll please stand for hymn number 124, and the, those that are serving communion can come at the same time. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift our hearts up to the Lord.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. As we look at the past and try to move forward in this new year, and I've heard these words of peace and joy and hope and love, I am reminded of what this table really is. This table is just that. This paid table is peace and joy and hope and love. And God invites us for all to come. This is not the Presbyterian table. This is not the Soda Springs table. But this is God's table. And he invites all of us. We don't have an invitation. We come in unconditionally. We cannot sit, have a seat at this table. We don't earn that seat. But we are here at the table. Let us pray. Just as the grapes and the grain of wheat are transformed, we are transformed by grace and your love. Holy God, we have no words with which to explain or to fully understand, and yet we are here with open hearts and open hands. As we work together to fill this world with peace and hope and joy and love, we ask that you continue to bless us. A new year is upon us, a year full of your promise and possibilities. Help us, O oh Lord, to see ourselves in this new light and fill us with a desire for change. You taught us that God's creation is full of abundance to be shared with everyone. Encourage us to share your love and your gifts for, with those around us. We have come to this table at your invitation, once strangers but now family. At this table, we are able to see and smell, touch and taste the gifts that our God freely offers to us. And yet this table is filled with not only God's gifts to us, but also with our dedications to God for the new year. Fill us, Holy Spirit, with the promise of new possibilities and open our hearts to the new year here on earth. We pray this and more by saying the prayer you taught us to say by praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night when he was with his disciples at the table, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them and he said this is my body broken for you and in the same way he took the cup And he gave it to his disciples and he said, This is my blood shed for you. Whenever you eat of this bread and drink from this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Holy God, move among this bread and this table and make us mindful in our oneness with all creation so that this meal of simple substance may become a new communion with the one who makes every tomorrow possible. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
the cup of salvation for you. Please stand now and join with me in singing our closing hymn, The Song of Hope. This to me is a perfect way to start our new year. life. Shun the eagerness of many, but be rich in good works. Pursue righteousness and godliness and faith and love and endurance and gentleness. And may God be your refuge and your fortress. May Christ Jesus free you from all that ensnares you. And may the Holy Spirit provide you with everything for godliness and contentment. And all God's people said, Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. Amen.